Hello, everyone. This is Anne Ray coming to you live from San Francisco, California. I am a fine artist. I'm also the creator of Making Art, Making Money, which is the leading global business program. It's the most reputable program of its kind. Been going strong for over 15 years. And I thought, you know, maybe it would be good to start talking to my students again for a bit and spotlighting them because it's one thing for you to listen to what I have to say and what I have to teach. It's another thing to talk to a student about what they're actually learning. So I'm going to bring on one of my students and he's just going to share what he's learning and um, hopefully you'll enjoy it. So here he comes. I'm going to put his head next to mine now. Hi there. You're muted. Damn, we can't hear you. Okay, there yeah, we go. How you doing? Good. Nice to meet you. Nice Before to meet you. Kind of Thank meet, you for your time. Meet you. You're welcome. Pleasure to have you. So I'm just going to ask you a few questions, and I just want you to share what comes to mind. But real quick, tell us your first, your last name, and where you are sitting on the planet right now. Absolutely. My name is Andres Bustamante. I am originally from Cali, Colombia, living in Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, you guys have um, beautiful emeralds. <laughs> yeah. I'm wondering if you could get me one of those. <laughs> my, my dream is to go back to Colombia. I actually haven't been back since I was 10. So. Oh, really? It's part of my mission, actually. <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. All right. Excellent. I love this. All right. So um, we have such interesting people who come into this program from all over the globe. It's really pretty fascinating. So what I'd like to do is just kind of travel back before you joined the program. What were your top two challenges and what did you want to achieve when you joined uh, the Making Art, Making Money program? It's an excellent question. Uh, really, I wasn't aligned with my purpose, with my uh, ikigai, my reason for being. And mm -hmm. that was my number one challenge. I was, I was just pursuing things because, uh, you know, I thought, yeah, art is something I love and it makes money, right? Uh, but I was missing other pieces of the puzzle. Right. So that was, I believe, my biggest challenge, being misaligned, out of alignment. And really not understanding boundaries and parameters. So, so this program has truly helped me. Can you give us an example of how, just one specific example of how you are more aligned now, you know, your purpose, you know, your, you know, your why and, and how to how, like, what's one example of how that showed up. So people understand what this abstract concept really means for an artist. Yeah, yeah I appreciate that question. And so I have been of the mentality that. I'm willing to be coached and I've always sought coaches, you know, books, programs, et cetera. Um, but I had the issue that I wasn't following through and I wasn't truly taking it to heart. But the things that really captivated me were um, the fact that you, you uh, this program made it very clear that um, it's within me already and that I needed to truly align to what was most genuine and authentic to myself. So what I truly enjoy is that you didn't start, the program didn't start with, here's how you sell art. Boom. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, that would be an awful place to start, actually. It was, it was, a, it was like challenge first, dig deep first. What's important? What is meaningful? What is meaning? What are the emotions behind why you create? Do you right, just create right. pretty things that hang above a wall on a couch? And yay, you got a pretty thing that hangs above a wall. It's right. meaningless right. that way. It has no spirit. It has no soul, no essence. So right. uh, it, 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 I've been, a, I guess, a self-empowerment, self-improvement uh on that path for quite a few years now, but what this program was able to do was put the puzzle together. And, and it was truly already within me. Yep. It made it clear and it made it bite-sized. Yeah. I, I try to swallow the whole thing sometimes, mm -mm. 
but the way that it was structured, the way the program was structured is like dig deep, bite sizes, because this is big, heavy lifting emotionally, yeah. spiritually. Yeah. So you're, if you're an artist, that. right? If you're, you want to call yourself an artist, your job as an artist is to inspire. That's in spirito, right? You have to get in touch with your own spirit. If you're Indeed. going to touch someone else's spirit. So that's mm -hmm. why we do have to dig deep. We have a different job than other entrepreneurs have. So that's wonderful. I'm glad to hear that. Now, you also mentioned something about boundaries, which I'm big on. And unfortunately, a lot of artists have had their boundaries encroached upon uh, and or completely violated in many cases, which I stand firmly against. And I like when my students really hold clear and healthy boundaries because I want you to all take your power back from the scarcity and permission-based art establishment. That's my aim. So can you give us like, was there a specific example like that happened where you said you defined your boundaries and you maintained your boundaries? It's, it's so beautiful how the universe works. Um, when I was trying I hear an echo. Yeah, you might, it could be your feedback. Okay. Yeah. When I was trying really hard and I was forcing things to happen and I yeah. was misaligned, the galleries weren't knocking at my door, the, uh, the collectors weren't knocking on my door, the opportunities, the murals. And I was forced, I was so angry. I was like, why are these galleries not, noticing me oh and then I was then I became more and more aligned and in tune with the frequency of, of my purpose my reason for being my mission and I realized wow like wow I'm chasing galleries they should be chasing me I'm chasing giving somebody else 50 percent of my hard work of you're my giving more than work. that more than that all your referrals. Yeah. And, and putting so much of my heart and soul, body, mind into something. And they, they have barely any skin in the game for me as my brand. And they, they want all that. So it's like, I was chasing all of that without boundaries. And the universe was, I, was, I kept hitting a block. The universe was like, no, no, of no. course. And now that I'm, self-empowered and self-aware and realizing wow it's it's already been within me I don't have to force things to happen no collectors have just been knocking at my door which which is what I <laughs> what I love galleries have actually been and I've had to turn people down good <laughs> now my standards <laughs> and my boundaries are like hmm 50% mm -hmm. off interesting actually that's the least of it right because you're if you work with the art establishment you not only have to give them half of your money but that's the least of it they also even though it's an illegal practice in most jurisdictions they will not allow you to get your own contactors collected uh your own collector's contact information now the reason why they're obligated to give that to you is because those are your customers they're not their customers because they haven't purchased your inventory they've only consigned your inventory yeah so you have every damn right to your own customer list and there isn't a business in this world that would that would just be able to thrive without having a customer list and so right. when you have your when you have your customers contact information you develop relationships with them and then you can generate referral sales which account for 80% more sales on average where you keep 100% of your money so right. there the bigger the bigger cost isn't the commission it's the fact that you can't contact your collectors and you're not going to share your mission they're not going to share your mission you've got like heart and soul and meaning and you've got your how that you're working on. That's not going to get translated in a gallery environment ever. It's all energy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So good. Good for you. All right. So let me got a few more questions here. I'd love to ask. Um, so I guess the question I have is like, if nothing changed, like, let's just say you 
just kept doing it, right? Just getting angry that the galleries were not responding to you. What are a few ways, maybe three ways that you think that that would have impacted you personally? Um, I would have had to go back to some corporate job and forfeit my business. I would have had to give up on my dreams and my mission. And my marriage would probably be hurting too because the more aligned I've become, the more truly on purpose I live my life. Wow. I'm I'm showing up stronger than I have before. So I I tell my wife, I honestly don't even think (laughs) you are a art business coach, you're a life coach. We just I don't even call myself to... a coach, by the way. Like I freaking hate the term coach. Mentor. I'm like, <laughs> you know why? Because people just go and they take these courses and they get a little certificate and they call themselves a coach. Mm-hmm. I'm like, and it's no, like a sticker, I... like a like a like a when you got in school, like a little gold star. Yeah, I don't want it. I don't want it. I just right. like all I want to do is like all, all I want to do is share what worked for me. And share what I see and I have seen working with other artists for 16 years from all around the world. Cause you know, I see what's working for them yeah. and I'm just trying to like, here it is. I'm telling you what the best practices are. I'm telling you what's working, but you know, coach, I'm not, I'm not a good coach. <laughs> I You're swear. A mentor. <laughs> You're a mentor. Um, and I told my wife, you know, I, I don't think I bought into an art sales program this is way way more than that so so the value um you could easily be charging 10 times more than than oh (laughs) i know actually i my mentor one of my i have a mentor who's like when the hell are you going to raise the price and i'm actually about to raise the price but they're like oh that is not even near enough because and you know, and I'm not bragging. I'm, you're the one saying it, right? I'm just like, I, I have these conversations with students, the ones who do the work, by the way, the ones not who the do ones the who don't do the work or who bitch and whine and complain. I cannot right. help them. They're, they're not a lot of them, but that just happened. But the ones who do the work, like you're doing the work, I mean, they really do. It's so funny. Their lives transform. And it's so funny because it, Jenna also told me this program saved her marriage. Yeah. She's like, yeah. and I said, how did it almost save your marriage? She said, because my, I, she said, I was so frustrated as an artist and I was trying to figure it out. And I'd go to my husband and he'd try to figure it out and we'd get into a fight and he couldn't help me because he's not an artist and he didn't know what to do. And so, yeah, it was, it's, I, I think that, you know, we all need, we all need a guide and we all need community. We need people to help us and who care and who like, feel inspired when we win versus what typically happens in a lot of artist environments. I'm sure you've seen this where they're all competing with one another. They're jealous. And then that snob voice comes out. You know, the one I'm talking about that snobby voice. Yeah. <laughs> like most it's, definitely. We just don't do that. There's no reason no. to, there's plenty to go around and so much abundance. Uh, there's, there's so much you just, you have to create value. That's the key. Create value. Um, so I guess um, I'm just so glad to hear you're not uh, caught up in chasing permission right. from the art establishment and you get it. And I think one of the things you also mentioned, one of the books on my recommended reading list is Go-Givers, which I oh. think is just really basic. But right. if you get that, like, it's not hard, is it? No, it's, it's just uh, living life with higher standards and higher principles um, and challenging yourself to, to re- renew your mind. We already are creative. We already are artists. Abundance right. is already readily available. Right. Uh, it's tapping into that, allowing right. it to happen. Right. And you got to do the work in order for that to happen. It doesn't have it magically, right? Exactly. You, like- exactly. Exactly. You have to move. You have to get things done. You have to be willing to fail. Then you have, then you learn from that failure. Just like when you're making art, you know, you make a lot of crap. Let's face it. We make a lot of ugly art and 
And you have to, because it's part of the process and it's not a bad thing. It's just part of the creative process is that creation and that destruction. Um, I guess I, here's a question for you. I almost didn't join the making art, making money program because of limiting beliefs that were holding me back and self-sabotaging. There you go, I, everybody. I, to be honest with you, I have worked with a lot of coaches or mentors before, bought the programs, bought the postcard, been there, done that. Yeah. But it wasn't until I was challenged by you personally. Mm-hmm. You're, you're, uh, you know, this program is not for everybody. No, it's not. It's just not. That's why it's we have an not. application process. We don't it's, let everybody yeah. in. Not everybody can join because not everybody's willing to do the work. And it wasn't until you challenged me and I was like, oh, okay. Oh, I'm investing, you know, and it's important and I have to do it because I invested and it's important for me to, to challenge myself and be challenged. And actually you remind, you reminded me and still do of my first ever life mentor or they Mm -hmm. call it life coaches. She called herself that, but, um, she was strict polite but strict Mm -hmm. not taking people's excuses right but also leading them like no go that way no do the work go back to the program go back and listen did you read this did you do that right Um, Right. so I I loved I love the sense of structure that there is but it's also bite-sized enough to where the squirrely brain yeah brain can be like okay no 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 okay go to step one Yeah, that's very Uh, deliberate because uh, artists, creative people tend to have shorter extension, uh, uh, attention spans. And so I employ something called micro learning. So I don't have long winded lectures. I can't stand long winded lectures. No, yeah, I get it. They're unedited, like and, and without purpose. I can't. So yeah, that's good. All right. So um. I guess the last question I have for you is if someone was like sitting on the fence and they weren't sure about applying, actually, actually, Joey, if you wouldn't mind putting the link into the chat for people, but if some, if they want to apply, but if someone was like sitting there like, Oh, I don't know if I should apply to enroll or not. What would you honestly say to them? Use my referral link. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Actually, you know, you know what? One or two more people you know just like Actually, you. Yeah. So, by the way, I do reward my students um, if they introduce a student because they're the better they're the better judge than. Facebook ads about whether or not someone's actually going to show up in this community and do the work. And so, I do give my students a little love in the form of money if they refer a qualified artist who then enrolls. So yeah, I mean, if you're open to have having people hit you up and talk about your experience, um, there you go. There is this, there there you go. He's got it right there. So talk, you, you don't have to talk to me. You can talk to, I'll hop on a call and tell you how amazing that is. (laughs) Well, you know, it's because you're doing the work, you know, Mm -hmm. like I get other people say, Oh God, she's just this, she's awful. Right. But what's the common denominator of all the artists, and there's not been many, but there have been some who say, oh, this program sucks and she sucks. They didn't do the work. And the thing is, it is, I can see that they haven't done the work because I can see from the back end that they actually haven't done the work. So if you're someone who looks to blame other people, well, first of all, don't apply to enroll in my program, but Mm -hmm. more importantly, understand that if you're looking to blame other people, like you were blaming the galleries for a while there, you're screwing yourself. There's, you're just, you're going to have so much freedom and so many more options visible to you. Once you take full responsibility for your success I think what happens is artists don't even know that there is a way to take full responsibility for their success. And so they become dependent upon the art establishment. But I'm telling you now, the art establishment is under severe disruption. And Mm -hmm. since the pandemic, the affluent have started buying more real estate and remodeling. And with that, 
they are buying art and there's tremendous opportunity, but don't take my word for it. I have a student here. You can ask him yeah. and he'll tell you that things have shifted and you don't have to be giving away 50%. That's ridiculous. Don't right. do it. And Anne didn't pay me or, or pull a tooth out <laughs> of my mouth to try to get me to talk about this. Like literally every time we hop on a, on a uh, Monday session, uh, group, co group coaching call or group mentoring call, I'm like, yeah, and you rock. Like this is rocking my world. Oh my gosh. And so, so I'm saying this out of the kindness and truth of my heart. Thank you. Um, so, so I really, uh, and because I am part of this community, I say, if you're ready to get your life changed, not just your art business, but your life and your yeah. mindset and your, and then you want to align to your truest, most genuine version and your sense of purpose. Nice. Do it. If you're willing to do the work, please sign up. If you're like on the fence and you're just like, I'm not going to actually take action. Literally, if you have three to five minutes, every, three to five minutes every day, that's what it takes to actually engage. Yep. In that's answer. it. That's my goal learning. If you don't have three to five minutes, every day or every other day, even you don't want yourself. it. You don't want it. Right. If you don't have three to five minutes, that's how long you're spending looking through your Instagram feed or whatever you're doing. Yeah. So if you don't have three to five minutes every day, you don't really, you're not really an artist and you don't really yeah. want this, but um, it is designed for super busy people because people are super busy in this program. They have a lot of obligations. And so it's deliberate. But I'm so proud of you. I've seen you evolve since the start of this program. And I've also watched you connect with other artists in the program, which I just love because I love seeing my students make friends with other students and start to build and strengthen their support network so that you're not trying to do this all by yourself right. because it's just too hard and too lonely and it's no fun. It's so much more fun when you can celebrate Hey, I sold a piece. I just got a commission. I just hosted an appreciation party. And that's just so much more invigorating, isn't it? Than like trying to do it all by yourself in your studio. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Awesome. All right. Well, I'm going to, um, when you go back to Columbia, you let me know because I really want a, I want an emerald from Columbia. <laughs> Well, send me, send me good vibes. There's a lot of immigration stuff that has to be figured out, but send me all the good intentions and I, 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 I will do. go to Columbia. I, I, you know, I would go to Columbia just to go salsa dancing. I haven't been salsa dancing in so long. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's worth the trip. <laughs> I used to. So that's what I, I used to do for fun. I used to oh, sal go salsa dancing. And yeah, I mean, it's just, oh, that's the best the best most, most definitely and uh next time i'm in san francisco i'll have to say hi i if hope you nashville do ever you know i was in nashville a, a while ago maybe three years ago two four years ago and i went to a honky tonk and saw mm -hmm. vince gill and i was like okay. and i was i had all this disrespect against country music i was like <laughs> oh, no way in hell am i gonna but I have to tell you, it was amazing. And the people he would call up on, to sta on stage, clearly they were famous because they were amazing. Wow. And I loved it. And who knew I would love a honky tonk, but I did. <laughs> yeah, it's the energy of the people and, and the, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, if you come to San Francisco, just like Jenna did, I'll take you to my coffee shop, which is, the, it's this round coffee shop right next to the um, South Tower of the Golden Gate Bridge, which is mm. less than one mile from where I'm standing. So that's my wow. promise. Okay. I was just in San Diego with my wife like last week. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, that's far. All right. When you get up mm -hmm. here. Okay. No, we're gonna, well, we're going to make it happen. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> All right. Good. All right. I'll see you then. All right. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you for Anne. sharing. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. I'm, and I'm proud of you. I would just keep up the good work. Okay. Thank you. All right.